Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanics tutorial. And in this one we're going to be building what we have on the screen here, which is a locomotive wheel rig. And this uses opposed pistons, so it moves in quite a pleasing way on the eye, I think. I looked online and found this and I thought it would look quite nice if I could build one of these. I'm making the model for this available for download, so uh, there will be a link in the show notes. Uh, I'm not actually going to build this one from scratch. But anyway, in order to achieve this, we're going to be using a combination of Espresso, IK rigs, and also some target tags. So it's not particularly heavy on Espresso, but there are quite a few expressions that we need to put in place. But anyway, that's what we're about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. The first thing I'm going to do is switch off this symmetry object because it's just getting in the way at the moment. We don't really need that. And initially we'll take a little bit of a look at the model. In fact, what we'll do, I'll switch to my top view, so F2. And let's take a, a look at what we've got. Just change the display. Garage heading lines I think will be good. And also isopalms. Now, if we look down upon this, if we just zoom in a little bit closer. Everything is in line correctly. Now, all of these pieces, they need to be aligned correctly along their x-axis. So wherever we've got items such as this here, all of these elements must be perfectly aligned along the x-axis. Similarly, if you were working along the z-axis, you'd have to do the same there along that axis. So all of the pieces that make up our links here, for all our link pieces here, they must be aligned accurately along the x-axis. And of course, I've modelled this so that they are. But that's just something to bear in mind if you make your own versions of these doing slightly different things in the future. OK, so that's the first thing that just needs to be said. Now, what are we going to do first with this in order to make it work? Well, the centre wheel here, this mid wheel, wheel mid as I've called it, this is going to be the driver for everything else. So this is the all important wheel. What we're going to do, we'll create a null object and call it Espresso. And this will feature two expressions. Now the first one we're going to use to drive all of the wheels. So if we Give it the tag, give it the Espresso tag. We've got the editor open and we can start thinking about what we're going to be doing in here. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in wheel mid. And if we go into rotation here, just select the rotation tool, we can see that we're going to, we're going to be working with our rotation P. So if I just command click to make that a little bigger, we can say global, well, it doesn't need to be global actually, we can just do rotation, that's fine. Rotation P, that's all we need in there. So that's set up and ready to go. The next thing we need to do is bring in an iteration. So we'll do that. And our iteration needs to end at three because of course we've got four wheels here. We've got our mid and four other wheels. And they're the ones that we're gonna be interested in. We need a link list, bring one of those in. We can connect the output of the iteration to the index port on the link list. And then we can populate this link list with our wheels, one to four. Bring in wheel four, we could bring in any of them, but we'll bring in wheel four, give it an object port, and we'll give it a rotation P port. and place this rotation P port at the top. Our link output can be plumbed into the object port. And then finally, our rotation P from the wheel mid can be plumbed into the rotation P of wheel four. And now, if we rotate our wheel mid, we find all our wheels rotate. So we've got the first part of this well and truly underway. We will return to this expression 
later on in the tutorial but for now we'll leave it where it is that's fine so moving on from here then we can select our espresso null and we can give this another espresso tag just bring that one in and this tag actually needs to be the second because our first will be our wheels our wheels will be the first thing that we want to drive the second thing we want to drive is this long rod here the one that connects all the wheels that's the all important one so or the, it's actually the coupling rod that's that's its true name but the coupling rod is the one we want to actually work with so in here what we need to do is bring in the coupling rod give it a global position port at the input stage and that's all we need to do there and then we've got to decide what's going to be driving or what's going to be connecting I guess to this rod in order to make it move in the correct way well if we twirl open our wheel mid we can see that we've got a, a, a null in here called CR target and that's coupling rod target so we'll bring that in and at the output stage we will give this global position just command click to make it bigger and then we can link the two together and now if we select our wheel mid we can see that everything is working it's all working beautifully and if we command Z everything goes back to zero and that's all fine it's all looking very good so that's great so that's all working as we needed to and of course our CR target is at exactly the same point as the midpoint of the coupling rod and that's why that works perfectly so you've got to make sure when you set this up that you put that CR target at exactly that same point otherwise the two won't match but anyway that's that's something that just needs to be thought about okay great so moving on from here then we can think about creating the IK rig for this first section here that's going to be our next port of call so what we're interested in here is the root rear that's what we're interested in and we can see that root rear starts at this linking piece here so if we twirl this open let's see what we've got in there so we've got mid rear which is just a cylinder object and that's our mid coupling so that goes in there and then we've also got a top we can ignore that for the moment but we've got rocking lever front and back so this piece here is called the rocking lever and then we've got a link which is this piece here and that features the, the a bottom cylinder as well that's in there but the link is the important bit so you can see that we've got a root then at a level in we've got a link and then one another level in we've got the end that's all set up correctly we've also got the connecting rod in there and we've got bottom rear as I said we've got that there so that's the order in which to set things up for this particular root rear null the next thing to do is to come down to rigging tags and select IK all we need to do is drag the end into the end field here and then we can click add goal and we, we create an end goal null and we can see that this has been set up correctly because we've got this green line in there that tells us that that's what's happening and if we go to our, our display we can see that this is the handle line and we can switch that off if we wish to so that's all there and that's all correct now our end goal it can't stay where it is because it's just it's not in the right place so we need to remove this and we actually need to put it under uh, well we can put it under our bottom or our top we'll, we'll just put all of these I think under the the top so we'll drop it into there so our, our end goal is in there okay so that's dealt with now let's see what happens if we select our wheel mid if we rotate this now we can see that that part is now working really really nicely and it's all looking very very good so that's fine command Z again and everything skips back to where it was in its initial position fantastic so root rear is dealt with that's absolutely fine and the next port of call I think we'll deal with fr root front that makes sense let's do that next root front is actually identical to root rear 
it's just a mirror image, I suppose you might say, of it. So all we need to do is select our root front here, rigging tags, IK, drop the end null into the end field, click add goal, and once again, our end goal we can drop under here. Now, if you wish, I mean, we've got a top and a bottom cylinder. When I was building this, I put my first end goal under there. I put the, I put the, 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 the actual null that lines up with the, the bottom under the bottom. That's why I, could, I did that. And I put the null that lines up with the top under the top. If it makes life easier for you and makes it more clear, then please do that. It doesn't really matter. You can just drop them all under the top as I was going to. But I think we'll leave it like that. We'll just leave it as it is because I suppose it does make things clearer. But anyway, that's fine. Let's see if we can move the mid wheel again and see what happens. And yes, everything is now working with both of our IK rigs. So that's all looking fantastic. Brilliant. So the next port of call then is going to be to set up this lever here. Uh, and move our slide and also move our piston. That's going to be the final step for actually making all of this work. Uh, and then we can think about moving on from there. We're going to need to pass the position of this link to this part of the assembly. So if we open up root rear, we've got top rear, which is this cylinder here. So what we need to do in slide rod rear here, we need to give this an espresso expression. So we'll bring in the tag. That's ready to go. And then we can bring in top rear and give this a global position port at the output stage. Moving on from here, we can think about what we need to bring in next, and that will be slide rod rear so that will come in and we can give that a global position at the input port connect the two together and let's see what we're getting now so let's have a go with our wheel mid see if we're getting anything and we can see that we are we're getting that to move it isn't doing what we needed to do yet because we need a target tag and that's going to be the next thing we need to do so slide rod rear here, we're going to add a target tag. Let's see where we are. Animation tags, target, that's the one we need. And we need to decide what this is going to look at. Well, it's actually going to be looking at this null here, which is slide assembly rear. So we can drag this into here. Now, if we look at slide rod rear, let's just go into our axis tool here. We can see, if we just change the view, this is position so that it's facing along its Z axis. And that's very important, of course, because all the target tags look along their Z axis. You've got no control over which axis the target tag looks along. It's always the Z axis. So if ever you find yourself doing a job that's similar to this one, make sure that your rods are set up so that they're facing along their Z axes. OK, so that's important to note. Right, let's have a go with that mid wheel again and see what we've got now. So what are we getting? Yeah, and we can see now that that's behaving differently. See, we're still not getting the behavior we want because the slide is staying still, but we can see that it's working. It's looking at that slide. So that's fine. It's doing what we need it to do. Moving on from here, what we'll do next, I think, is get this to the same stage with our front slide assembly and, and other elements. So let's select slide rod front and we'll give this the espresso tag. And then we can start work on this and see where we go from here. So we've got slide rod front, we're going to need root front and we're going from here we're going to say top front because if we select that we can see that it's the top cylinder. So we'll bring that one in. We'll give that a global position port at the output stage. We'll bring in slide rod front. 
and do the same thing again. Global position port only at the input stage. Connect the two together. Grab a hold of that wheel once again and we'll do a quick test to make sure it's doing what we want it to. And yes, we're getting the behavior that we would expect to get. So we can close that down. So on slide rod front, we can give it a target tag and we know that it needs to look at slide assembly front on this occasion. So we can drag that into there. And now if we play around with our wheel once again, we find that uh, our slide rod front is behaving exactly as we would expect it to. Fantastic, so we've got it that far. The next thing we need to worry about is going to be what's happening with our slides here. That's gonna be very important. So we'll be doing that next. Let's just set that back to zero. That's better. Okay, fantastic. So everything is set up. We've got slide rod rear. We've got it set up with its, in fact, I've just lost the target there. Let's just put that back on animation target and drop that back into there. So that's fine, that's all set up as it should be. But yes, we've got everything set up. We've got the targets in, we've got the espresso in for those two, and we can move on from here, get the slide moving and get the pistons moving. Right, so we wanna get our slide and our piston moving. So we'll start with, once again, the rear ones. So in order to do that, we've got slide rod rear here, we've got this open, and in here, we've got slide link rear. This is what we need in order to make this work. So we'll give this an Espresso tag. Just pull that in there. And once again, we only need a couple of nodes. So we need to bring in slide link rear. Once again, we'll give it the global position port at the output stage. And then all we need to do in order to make this work is bring in slide assembly rear once again, we'll do the same global position, link the two together, close this down, get a hold of our mid wheel, and let's see what's happening now. And we can see that that's moving, but it's unfortunately moving along the Z axis, and also it's moving up and down in the Y. Now we don't want that, we just want it to stay flat, so that's gotta be fixed. And the reason that doesn't work is because I have made a schoolboy error. Let's see what I've done wrong. Right, what I should have done here, it shouldn't be global position. So let's delete those ports. Just select that one and delete it. What I should have said was global position Z. That's what I needed to do there. Global position, global position Z. Link the two together. Again, we'll make that a little bigger so that we can see what we're doing. And now when we move, we get what we want. So don't make a schoolboy error but that's working perfectly. Okay, fantastic. So we can move on from there. We'll just undo that to make everything go back to zero. In fact, we'll select the wheel and make sure we have, we've got it back there, that's fine. So now what we need to do is do the same with our fronts. So let's see where we are. So we've got slide link front here. We'll give that the espresso tag, bring it in global position Z. That's got that sorted out. Bring in our slide assembly front. Once again, global position Z. Link the two together. Select our wheel. And now everything is working as we'd expect it to. And it looks fantastic, doesn't it? Okay, brilliant, that's fab. So we can bring this back to zero and everything will snap back. And that's all fantastic. The next thing we can do then is think about bringing in the symmetry object. We'll bring that back in. And now when we move the wheel, of course, everything works because the symmetry object is copying what we've got. So that's beautiful. And of course, the symmetry object is just placed at position zero here if we select that symmetry. That's where it is, it's, it's just at zero here and it's giving us the, the perfect gap between the, the actual wheels. So that's fantastic, that's all doing what it's supposed to do. 
And of course, I've grouped everything here into a null and called it loco wheels rig. And that's basically so that we can just pick all of this up. I mean, we can, we can pick it up from the symmetry object and we can place it anywhere in the scene and it will still work. So that's all good. Because of course we're using global positioning. So great, so that's doing what we need it to. Now, the last thing I want to do, I want to be able to grab a hold of this loco wheel rig here and I want to be able to move it and I want everything to work. At the moment, nothing happens. But what I want to do when we move it along its z-axis, I want all the wheels to turn and I want everything to move. So that's going to be the last thing. And that's where I said that we would return to our initial uh, initial expression. And we're going to do that in there. But before we get to that stage, what we're going to do is select our mid wheel here. Go into edge mode and UL, let's just deselect everything, UL. And we'll select, let's just get a bit closer actually so that we can see what we're doing. We're going to select this edge here. And we're going to use this and turn it into a spline. So we'll come into our mesh here and we'll say edge to spline. We've created our wheel mid spline so we can remove this. Open up our expression and we're just in here, what we're going to do, we're not going to be keeping any of this, but we just need to find out how long this spline is. So we'll bring the spline in, give it an object port, bring in a spline node, connect the output of our spline here to the object port. And we want a length port at the output stage and then we can simply plumb this into a result node. And that will tell us how long our spline is. So it's 255.934. So what we need to do is bring in our loco wheel rig. At the output stage, we can simply say here position Z. And even though loco wheels rig is grouped into symmetry, we don't need to worry about uh, global position on this occasion this will work fine the final node we need to bring in will be a range mapper so we'll come to the calculate range mapper bring one of those in and we can plumb the output of our loco wheels rig into the input right so what do we need in our range mapper well our input range will be user defined initially I'm going to say degree for our output range. A 0 to 360 is perfectly good. Now, this is just for illustrative purposes, really, at the moment. We are going to change that. As per usual, our input lower here will start at zero. Our input upper needs to be the length of our spline. So that needs to be 255.934. Which, of course, equates to the circumference of our wheel. So that's important. Now, we don't really want degrees as the output range. We actually need radians. And that converts straight away to 6.2832. All we now need to do, we'll just move these over a little bit, is add a rotation P port at the input stage of our wheel mid make that a little bigger and then I can plumb the output of my range mapper into the input and we can see that it's moved that's fine it's, it should be okay if we just zoom out a little bit here grab a hold of our wheel rig and our axis tool or axis mode and let's see what happens right so we are getting the motion but it's working in the opposite direction and it's quite simply because if we go back into our range mapper uh, open this up. What I should have said was minus 6.2832. And that should be working perfectly well now. So let's see where we are. And you can see that it is fabulous. So that works beautifully. We can get rid of that uh, spline there now. And we can also remove these because we don't need them anymore. So that's great, that completes that expression. And it actually does complete this tutorial because 
I've now shown you everything I wanted to show you and you can see that that works beautifully and as I said it works anywhere in the scene we don't want to do that we want to move it via the symmetry object let's just move that so you can see that that works grab a hold of this and sure enough it works wherever we choose to place it great that's all behaving exactly as we need it to Yes, one last thing before I finish. Now, I'm hoping that there will be those of you out there who have seen my Beam Engine tutorial who may have realised that there's a deliberate mistake here in this tutorial. Even though everything works, and of course it does, it all works fine, we know that if we get a hold of our loco wheels and we move it, everything is working as it should. There's actually a part of it that I didn't actually need to do. Now, where I've got slide rod rear here, and I added this expression, there was actually no need to. We can remove that expression and all we need to do is group this into top rear because top rear is at exactly the same location and it just simply needs to give its position to slide rod rear. So now if we get a hold of our loco wheel rig we can move it and we still get the same result. And of course the same thing applies down here. We've got slide rod front, we can remove this expression and drop this into top front and we'll get the same result once again let's just move that again and we can see that and there you go so that's all you need to do there you don't actually need that expression it'll all work fine I mean if we weren't using an IK rig and we were doing something else it might be possible that you would need to actually move those things further down the object list and add an expression but in this situation there's no need whatsoever because the IK rig just deals with it and all we're doing as I say is passing the position of top front here to slide rod front and the same with slide rod rear and, and top rear that's all you need to do and it all works perfectly well but anyway if you were screaming at your screen you've made a mistake there you should have just grouped those things together then go to the top of the class you saw the deliberate mistake and I'm glad that you were thinking but anyway, that about closes this one down. Fabulous. So that does bring us to the end of this tutorial. And as always, I really hope you've got something out of this one and you can use some of these techniques in your own projects. I'd like to see what you're doing with them and see if you can do something perhaps a little bit more traditional with locomotive wheels if you don't particularly like this setup or you want to do something a bit different. Maybe you can build the locomotive around this and we can get it on some rails and see it running. That would be really nice. But uh, but anyway, yep, that just about completes this one. So as always, if you have enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that about brings the curtain down on this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.